This is the second episode of the Indie Game Dev Journal, a series about my journey as a game developer. I'm Noah Khalees, a passionate game creator, and today we will take a look at my second completed project, Color Shooter. To bring Color Shooter to life, I teamed up once more with my brother, Liam, who handles the game programming. I created, like for Midnight Fire, all the art and animations. I used Adobe Photoshop to draw concepts and create the colorful splash screen and main menu. Autodesk Maya for the 3D models, rigs and animations and my brother used the C-sharp programming language to bring all this art to life. The original idea for Color Shooter came from me, but we both ended up handling the design of the game, balancing it out and adding rules throughout production. The idea and design behind Color Shooter is more original than the simple shoot and survive mechanics of Midnight Fire. The player controls this strange, squishy yellow man wearing big goggles and handling a rotating gun that can shoot four different types of bullets. Red, green bullets, blue and purple. Similar, cute, squishy characters spawn from all four sides of the map, each one with a very specific color, red, green, blue or purple. These enemies can only be harmed and ultimately destroyed by a bullet of the same color. So for example, a red enemy can only be harmed by a red bullet. If the player hits an enemy with a different colored bullet, he will take damage instead. He also takes damage if the squishy enemies reach him. There are also special, stronger enemies such as the red brute, poison green, horned purple and hopping blue, each with its own unique ability. We had in mind a frantic, reflex, mind-twisting game, and we more or less achieved that with Color Shooter, but not completely. We added a squishy, gold jelly resource acquired whenever an enemy is destroyed, and it is used to purchase various power-ups, such as the freeze, which, as the word implies, freezes temporarily all enemies and stops them from spawning, the heal, which gives the player a couple health points, and the special bullets, which can destroy any enemy except the horn purple ones. Now all this sounded great on paper, but wasn't so awesome in practice. We couldn't figure out an easy way for the player to access these power-ups, so we ended up using the mouse. This made things a little quirky. The player at times had to have his hands on the arrow keys, as air keys and the mouse, an almost impossible feat for a two-handed human. Adding power-ups, in my opinion, also got rid of the simplicity and in a way elegance of the game. Looking back, I feel that it wasn't really needed and made things harder to understand and complex to handle. Our second design problem came with the balancing. We made three levels of difficulty, but they weren't well balanced. The easy level is rather great for people starting up the game for the first time, but normal hardly feels any different and hard is just plain easy. At the bottom of the screen you can see my record, almost 700 seconds and I didn't lose, I just stopped playing. The reason this happened, our way of collaborating on the project sucked. Liam worked on his Mac, programming away and I made art on my windows. To send my art to Liam, I used Gmail. It was a painful process. I hardly ever touched Unity. As a result, I very rarely playtested the game. Me and Liam tested it out here and there for about 10 minutes or so every day, but that definitely wasn't enough. And so we launched an unbalanced game. By the time we figured this out, the game was out for download and we were too lazy to go back in, retest and increase the difficulty. So the lesson here is to playtest thoroughly and prioritize simplicity over complexity. The best of games are the ones that are quick and easy to understand, 
but complex and hard and long to master. Yet despite our communication and design problems, making this game was once again an awesome experience. It was a bigger, more ambitious project than Midnight Fire, and we completed it. We didn't give up, we kept going even when times got hard. On the art side, I had a hell of a time figuring out what to do with the environment. There came a time when we were set on keeping the map looking like this. But after showing that to the family, we thought twice, and so, after a couple hours, I came up with something a lot more colourful and interesting that feels part of the colour shooter world. And that is the end of episode 2. Now this game was made in November 2016, and Blackthorn Prod would not make another until February 2017. So stay tuned and continue following us on our journey, for it is about to get rather hard and bumpy. I thank you so much for watching, it would be superb if you could subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. All comments and feedback are of course encouraged and welcome. As you wait for episode 3 of the Indie Game Dev Journal, I urge you to check out and play Color Shooter. Despite what I said about its design flaws, it's still fun and will twist your mind as you grasp for the right keys and boots to shoot. Okay, thanks again, cheers.